guys i am giving away a free 30 minute lower body workout if you want it click the link below and download it while it's still available what is going on coco pops if you follow the instructions in this video and you avoid the ab mistakes i'm going to be addressing you will solve so many problems for yourself number one you will be able to feel the burn in your abs this is a huge problem that i know a lot of you experience where you're doing your ab exercises but you don't feel the burn in your abs you're feeling it in your thighs you're feeling it in your lower back you're feeling it in your neck your arms literally everywhere except your abs this video will help you solve that problem also if you experience back pain or neck pain when you're trying to do ab exercises on the floor this video is really going to help you to overcome that so that you can be more efficient with your ab workout that way you're able to do fewer workouts and get faster results so if you're with me let's do this subscribe to my youtube channel if you haven't done so already it's totally free for you and it means so much to me also download my app it's available on the apple itunes store and the google play store before we get into the mistakes there is some level setting we have to do because there is some confusion around the purpose of various ab exercises as far as what they do which parts of the abs they target how it all works and how to perform them correctly so to really get the value out of this video i need to clarify a few things about three particular ab exercises for you once you understand what i'm about to tell you about these three particular ab exercises you will understand why these mistakes i'm about to explain are so damaging it's also important for me to explain about these three specific specific ab exercises because I know a lot of you are going to share this video with your friends and so we all need to be on the same page. The three exercises I'm going to talk about are sit-ups, planks and bicycles and i'll explain to you in just a moment why i've selected these three in particular obviously as you know there are literally dozens if not hundreds of different types of ab exercises you can do but these three i selected for a very specific reason i'll tell you what the, that reason is in just a moment but let's just quickly talk about sit-ups planks and bicycles this is what a basic sit-up looks like your feet are on the floor your lower back is on the floor your knees are bent typically your hands are behind your head and you are raising your torso all the way up and lowering your torso all the way back down to your mat the interesting thing about sit-ups is that there are so many variations so there's the basic sit-up that we already talked about just now but then did you know you can also do a sit-up with a twist it's the same form as the basic sit-up except when you bring your torso up you do a little twist to each side and even with your setup with twists you have different variations of that i'm not going to go into the variations of the variations i think you get the point another variation of that basic setup is a setup with a leg raise it's mostly the same as the basic setup except now you have one leg extended out and you keep that leg hovering the whole time you are doing your setups of course this is a more advanced type of the basic setup but it's definitely a variation of setups that is good to assess aspire to when you want to challenge yourself and you want something more interesting than just the basic sit-up and of course there is yet another variation i'm going to talk about which is the sit-up with relaxed arms most of you are familiar with the sit-ups where you put your hand behind your head there's also a variation where your hand is not behind your head it's just relaxed on the floor chilling while you sweat with your planks you are typically with your hands fully extended your wrists are directly underneath your elbows which are directly underneath your shoulders your legs are fully extended your core is engaged and you are doing your best to keep a straight line all the way from your head to your heel what that means is that you're not hiking your booty up to the ceiling and your pelvis is also not sinking down to the mat you are as straight as straight can be just like the sit-ups your planks can have so many different variations and i know the variation you hate the most and that is the plank salutes that is when you are in that plank position and you salute twice and put your hand down and then you change hands and you salute twice and put your hand hands down this is a more difficult variation of the full plank which is what we just talked about another variation on the plank as you know is the elbow plank this time your weight is resting on your elbows and your hands are in a 90 degree angle the rest of your body is in the same position as if you were doing just a basic full plank there's also the up and down plank which is a great exercise to do i highly recommend aspiring to being able to do up and down planks if you can't do them yet with your up and down planks it's exactly what it sounds like you're going from 
from a basic full plank to a basic elbow plank and you're just going through that motion until you're done with your rep there is also the side plank this is another variation i know a lot of you do not like but it's so important to do these variations and again i'll explain to you why i picked these three specific ab exercises in just a moment i know i've already given you so many tips already but we haven't even gotten to the mistakes yet we're still level setting the last exercise we need to quickly talk about before we get into the mistakes which is bicycles with your bicycles you are typically on your back lower back is on the mat your knees are bent and you are pulling your knees in while also bringing your elbows towards your knee once you make contact or almost make contact between elbow and knee you swap and then you try to do the same thing on the other side there are so many variations of this exercise as well surprise surprise one of the most popular ones is just straight bicycles knee to elbow knee to elbow it's a very cool exercise to watch somebody else do the key is to watch somebody else do this not to do it yourself because oh my goodness does this burn so these are three specific ab exercises that i will be using to illustrate the mistake mistakes that I want to talk about in this video. That's why it was so important for us to get on the same page about what these exercises are. The other thing you need to remember about these three exercises is that they target your entire ab muscles. That is your upper abs, your core, your TVA, your obliques, and your lower abs. You're just snatching everything at the same time. So these exercises are really good to do, but there are also so many mistakes that people make. So I thought they would be the perfect culprits to use to illustrate my points. The other thing I want you to keep in mind about these exercises is that when I'm talking about the mistakes that people make with these exercises and just ab exercises, in general, I'm going to focus on the most basic form of all of them. So when I'm talking about sit-ups, I'm talking about the basic sit-up. When I'm talking about planks, I'm talking about the basic full plank. And when I'm talking about bicycles, I'm talking about the most basic form of bicycles. We are keeping it 100% basic in this video. Mistake number one is one that a lot of people make with sit-ups and bicycles, and that is arching the back. Ladies, there is a time and a place for the arching of the back. And I workouts is typically not that place instagram photos is typically the place to arch your back get your dirty mind out of the gutter so now you're probably wondering what's the big deal if i arch my back so what i'll tell you i'll tell you that's a really good question i'm glad you asked that number one it is highly highly inefficient to arch your back while you're doing your work your ab workouts because if you are arching your back that means you're not putting the full force into contracting your ab muscles which means that you're going to end up doing way more work than you actually need to be doing and who wants to do more work than they need to be doing not me probably not you the other thing with arching your back when you're doing ab exercises on the floor is that you are automatically involving your back muscles this is not something you want to do not a game you want to be playing if you're involving your lower back muscles while you're doing ab exercises you're going to create pain and you may already be creating that pain if that's an issue you're dealing with i'm going to talk about that some more toward the end of the video so just keep watching the scary thing about arching your back when you're doing ab exercises is that you may not even really realize that you're doing it so how do you know if you are arching your back when you're doing ab exercises don't wait till you're in pain to figure this out there's this very simple test that you can do and it's called the pencil or finger test it, why does this video sound so dirty basically the way you test to make sure you're not making this mistake is to lay on your back as if you're about to do a sit-up now in that position try to slide a pencil through your lower back if that pencil is able to go between your lower back and the floor that's a pretty convincing sign that you are making this mistake and you need to correct that you can also try using your finger if you can get a finger through between your back and the floor then you are definitely one of the people i'm talking to with this mistake one thing i want to quickly interject here is that i personally have made all of these mistakes and sometimes i still make mistakes so don't feel bad if you're making these mistakes i'm a personal trainer and i make mistakes we're all human we're all doing our best this video is just here to help you not to make you feel bad about anything so if you do the pencil test and you realize that you're making this mistake no worries I will tell you how to fix it in just a moment if there is a bit of a technique and art to that and I will explain it to you in just a moment let's move on to mistake number two the second mistake a lot of people make with ab exercises is that you are completing each rep of your exercise in two seconds or less what do I mean by this a good exercise where I see this mistake being made a lot is bicycles I see people speeding through their bicycles as if they are riding a real bicycle out 
outside. If your goal is to tune up your abs, get some definition going, and have that six pack look or the 11 line ab look, then you definitely want to correct this mistake. This one is a huge deal because if you are doing your bicycles or other ab exercises this fast, you are probably also committing another crime, which is you are probably holding your breath. And we all know by now that holding your breath when you're exercising is not a good idea. If you're holding your breath, you are simply not going to be able to contract your ab muscles the way you need to. And that means you're not going to get the results that you deserve. The other thing is that it's again, not efficient. If you're speeding through that workout, basically what you're doing is you're just basically getting a cardio session in and you're not training your abs the way you think that you are. How do you know though, if you're making this mistake of doing your reps in two seconds or less, I don't want you to go off of your intuition. I don't want you to guess. I don't want you to go off of your feelings. I want you to actually test this out. Get out a timer and do 10 reps of bicycles. If you're able to do 10 reps in 20 seconds or less, you are guilty, my friend. You are guilty and I will tell you how to solve this problem in just a moment. Of course, we need to move on to mistake number three. Mistake number three is one that's very interesting because if nobody tells you that you're making this mistake, you're not going to realize that it's one of the things holding you back from seeing results. And that is the mistake of being on your tiptoes when you're doing ab exercises. This is usually a challenge for people when you're doing something like sit-ups or anything that looks like sit-ups because a lot of people struggle to keep their feet on the floor during these exercises. This is a mistake that's also very common if you're trying to exercise when you're tired. You're probably wondering if it's really something you should be worried about. And my answer to that, of course, is yes. If it wasn't a problem, I wouldn't include it in this video. The biggest problem with this mistake is that you are putting unnecessary strain on your feet and your calf muscles and you are at great risk of injuring your foot. I recently had a foot injury from guess what? Walking. Can you believe it? I was one of those people that used to take my feet for granted. I would wear high heels. I would do whatever I wanted with my feet, not giving them a second thought. But when I hurt my feet from walking too much, I realized how important my feet are. So don't be like me. Cherish your feet, take care of them. And one of the ways you can take care of your feet is to not be on your tiptoes when you are doing ab exercises. You're on your tiptoes when you're doing ab exercises, you are forcing the muscles and the joints in your feet to do things that they are not designed to do. This one is actually a very quick and simple fix. It's a bit of a pain to do, but don't worry. I'll tell you when we talk about how to solve that mistake. The funny thing about all these mistakes is that the solutions are not always very obvious or they could be simpler than you think. So keep watching and I will tell you how to fix all of these mistakes in just a moment. Mistake number four, I alluded to this earlier in the video, and that is that you are ignoring the pain in your lower back. Ooh, this is a big one. A lot of people, I've seen a lot of comments on my channel that when you're trying to do ab exercises that involve going on the floor, you feel a lot of pain in your lower back and you ignore this pain thinking it's going to go away. Ooh, 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 bad idea. Let's not do that. Mm -mm. You might be thinking, well, I just want to get my abs. I just want to be toned. I just want to get results, I can take a little pain and I salute you for having that can do attitude. But let me tell you something that you may not want to hear, but I am obligated to share it with you because it's my job. And that is to tell you that if you ignore pain in your body, it doesn't get better. Ignoring pain will never make it better. You have to address the pain. I'll tell you how to address pain that you may be experiencing from doing ab exercises on the floor. But the main thing here is to just understand that it's a huge mistake to ignore that pain. I used to experience back pain from doing ab exercises in the past. I've also experienced back pain from the period after my son was born. Let me tell you, now that I am totally free of back pain and have been free of back pain for years, I don't want to go back. And I want you to be free of back pain if that's something you struggle with because life is just so much more fun when you can sit down without your back hurting. Amen? Amen. Let's move on to mistake number five. Mistake number five is that you exercise on bad surfaces. I'm gonna try not to get into a rant here, but we need to have a discussion about this. If you're exercising in your bed. That is not a good surface to do ab exercises if you are exercising on the bare tiles, hardwood floors, or even carpet sometimes. Those are all bad surfaces to do ab exercises. The only real exception to this is if you're on your period and you're just trying to do something to maintain your exercise routine. You can be forgiven for doing a couple of reps here and there in your bed. But other than that, if you are healthy, 
able-bodied there's nothing wrong with your legs girlfriend no doing of exercises on surfaces that do not support your body in the way that you need I know you're probably wondering if this is another one that you can just ignore and pretend it's not there well you could but I don't recommend it here's why if you're exercising in your bed your back is not supported it's not supported in the way it needs to be supported even when you're doing ab exercises that challenge your stability you're still doing them on surfaces that are designed for that purpose so if you're doing ab exercises on a stability ball the ball is a firm surface that is designed to challenge you if you're doing your ab exercises on a bosu ball it is a firm surface that is designed to challenge your balance a bed is usually not a hard surface and is certainly not designed for doing ab exercises and that is so important to remember because again we don't want to waste time doing things that just don't work or things that hurt us in the long run here's the thing if you get injured it's very difficult to exercise with an injury and that just means all the work you have done for months or even years can easily just go out the window if you have a say two to three month period where you can't work out because of an injury so just be careful and take care of your body that's something that's really important to do okay so what about the other surfaces what about the hardwood floors the tiles and the carpet these are actually very harsh surfaces to do ab exercises on and as i say these words i'm feeling like oh my gosh seriously toughen up there are worse things in life than doing ab exercises on hard surfaces but let me tell you if you don't have to suffer why suffer if you don't have to hurt yourself why hurt yourself let's do the right thing and not cause damage to our spines which is something that you are at high risk for if you are doing ab exercises on the bare floor remember the exercises that involve targeting your abs tend to be exercises that involve some type of flexion or bending of the ab muscles inward that bending process not only challenges your hips and your abs and your lower back it is also affecting your spine your spine is connected to your brain yo and you need that brain so you can weed out these men what how, how? okay let's go into how to solve these problems we've talked about a lot so far so let me just quickly recap in 20 seconds or less we've talked about sit-ups planks and bicycles and the muscles they target we've talked about variations of sit-ups planks and bicycles we've talked about five different mistakes why they're a big deal and how to test for two out of five of them the mistakes we've talked about are arching your back when you're doing ab exercises like sit-ups and bicycles completing your reps in two seconds or less when you're doing exercises like bicycles doing your ab exercises while on your tiptoes ignoring pain in your lower back and exercising on bad surfaces like beds floors and carpets okay now that we're on the same page feel me i feel you let's talk about how to solve these problems mistake number one if you passed the pencil or finger test congratulations you are in good shape but if you are on the struggle bus and this is something you have never quite been able to achieve here's something i want to show you you practice this while standing so you're going to stand up straight with good posture when you one hand on your lower back one hand on your abs and turn your pelvis you will feel that movement in your lower back that is the movement you want to be doing while you're on the floor before you do any ab exercise so let's practice you're standing up straight one hand is on your lower back the other arm is on your abs and you're just going to turn your pelvis slightly so that your abs go in and you're just there like that good you want to consciously do this motion before you start your ab exercises when you watch a lot of professionals or a lot of people that have worked out for a long time do their ab exercises they do this so fast and so instantly instinctively that you may not even realize that they've done it and so if you're new to ab exercises or you struggled with this or no one has ever taught you this technique you just start doing your ab exercise not knowing that they already turned their pelvis and you haven't turned yours how to fix mistake number two this one is one that's going to take some technique some patience and some self-love to practice even i still have to remind myself to do this and sometimes i forget and that is in order to do your at, or your reps at the correct speed you have to remember how to breathe while doing your ab exercises when you are doing a sit-up for example remember to inhale take a deep breath in on your way down and exhale take a deep breath out on your way up again you're going to take a deep breath in the inhale on your way down and then you're going to exhale as you raise your body up this is the most effective breathing pattern to help you get the most out of your reps if you're focused on your breathing it's going to be incredibly difficult to just speed through your reps and that is the whole point to slow down focus on the breathing so that you're 
also automatically focusing on the contraction of your muscles and you will automatically not make this mistake anymore. You could just try to slow down while you're doing your exercises, but I find that it's way more effective to advise you to focus on your breathing than telling you, oh, just slow down because then, okay, you're slowing down, but if you're not if you're still not breathing correctly, you're still not going to optimize your results. Write that one down because tomorrow when you're doing your ab workout in my app, you're going to be like, wait, am I supposed to breathe in when I'm going up? Am I supposed to breathe out when I'm going up? Oh my gosh, I forgot. Mistake number three is one that's super duper easy to fix and solve. And this is my favorite one to solve because it really doesn't cost you anything to fix this mistake, but the payoff is massive. And that is if you're having a hard time keeping your feet flat on the floor, find a surface that you can tuck your feet in under while you're doing your sit-ups or your ab exercises that require your feet to stay flat on the floor. When you're doing ab exercises, the correct position for your feet is for them to be flat on the floor, heel to toes, making contact with the floor. Like I said, I make mistakes and I know that I have made this mistake way more times than I care to admit, but a very simple way to fix this, just tuck your toes under something and it will serve as a cue to you. So when you feel your heels rising, that, that surface that is above your feet will remind you to put those heels back down. The same applies if you tend to raise your toes while you're doing these ab exercises. Mistake number four, you are ignoring the pain in your lower back. This is one that I'm very passionate about because listen, I don't want you to be in pain for any reason, not even because you're working out. Working out should not be a source of pain. I need this on a t-shirt. Working out should not be a source of pain. <sighs> okay, what is the solution to this? The solution to this is to make sure that you are doing back strengthening exercises. Something a lot of people don't understand is that your abs are part of a bigger group of muscles that we just call the core. Your abs have a very strong relationship with your lower back. So if your lower back is weak and you're doing a lot of ab exercises, what's going to happen at a very microscopic level that you can't see is that essentially your ab muscles are going to be exerting a lot of force on your body that your lower back cannot balance and compensate for. And this is one of the most beautiful Beautiful things about the human body. It's all about balance. Your muscles must be in balance. Your body must be in balance. Everything must be in balance. If there is an imbalance between your abs because you're doing a lot of ab exercises and you're not doing enough lower back exercises, it will result in pain. And also something else that could be causing pain in your lower back that you may want to look into is your core and your abs may just be way too weak to do the particular ab exercises you're trying to do. That doesn't mean you shouldn't do any ab exercises. It just means that the particular one you're trying to do may not be right for your body and fitness level. If you decide that it is because your core is too weak to do a particular exercise like sit-ups, then it's okay to switch to something that's a little bit easier to do or a little bit less abrasive to the lower back. Planks would be a great substitute if you find that sit-ups are just too hard to do because your core is too weak. When you strengthen your core with an exercise like planks, eventually you will be able to do sit-ups without any pain. In addition to doing back exercises, I'm going to tell you three more things that you can do to solve this problem. Number one is to do fewer reps of each exercise. It is better to get fewer quality reps than to do a lot of reps that are not really counting for much. Stretch out your hamstrings. Your hamstrings are the muscles in the back of your thigh. If you are not stretching out your hamstrings and you're a person that sits a lot, then what's going to happen is that those muscles are going to get shorter and when they get short, they will pull on your booty, which will pull on your lower back, which will cause pain. There are so many great stretches you can do for your hamstrings and I love them all. And of course, the best time to stretch out your hamstrings is after a workout when your muscles are already warm or after a shower when your body is warm. The last thing I'm going to tell you on fixing this particular problem of pain in the lower back is to foam roll your butt, foam roll that booty. I just foam roll your butt and thank me later. Mistake number five, exercising on bad surfaces. How do you fix this? Don't do it. Don't exercise in your bed. Don't do your ab exercises on tile, hardwood floors, carpet. Just don't do it. Get yourself a nice exercise mat. I get my exercise mats from wherever I can. I don't really have a favorite brand. I have one that I got from five and below for five bucks. I have another one I got from TJ Maxx for $7.99. So I don't spend a lot of money on my exercise mats, which is probably why they always end up peeling and looking like crap in not too long but I've had one of them the one from TJ Maxx now for about three years and I've had my other one for I would say maybe a year and a half so they do last long enough for me to feel okay with my investment in them sometimes just out of laziness I don't want to get my exercise mat and I want to do my exercise on the floor and I always regret it so don't be like me get your exercise mat and always 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 use it when you are doing your ab exercises it will greatly 
protect your back. Subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. It's totally free for you and it means so much to me. I'll see you in my next video. Download my app. It's available on the Apple iTunes store and also on Google Play. I post exclusive workouts in my app and also exclusive educational content even way better than this video you just watched.